Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Chat Show. This 30-minute webinar is live on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And your comments and questions via these platforms are most welcome. Please keep them kind and respectful. Following this event, you are welcome to join us via the Blue Jeans online conferencing app for a one-hour NASA-accredited workshop with our guest presenter. Now, here's your host, Dr. Tim Kitchen. And thank you very much, Rob. Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live chat show being recorded via Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on Wednesday, the 24th of June, 2020. I'm your host, Tim Kitchen, Adobe's Senior Education Specialist for the Asia-Pacific region. And co-hosting with me again is the wonderful Erin Wraithke from TAFE Queensland. Hi, Erin. Welcome. Hey, Tim. How are you doing? Going very well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing really, really well. I apologise in advance. There's some aeroplane activity above my house tonight. So if you hear a low rumble, it's not my stomach. Well, that's pretty rare these days to see aeroplanes anyway, so uh, it's not, not a problem. But Erin, tell us about our guest presenters for tonight. Thanks, Tim. So joining us tonight is Adobe Education Leader Joel Ahrens. He's primary teacher from Victoria and Adobe Campus Leader MJ Rutz, who is a secondary teacher in Queensland. And as usual, helping us moderate this session and the deeper dive session later on at the top of the hour is my colleague, Jerry Wong. Let's bring Jerry to the screen. How are you, Jerry? Good evening, everyone. I'm very well, thanks. So today I'll be moderating the show and um, look, we welcome everybody to post your questions and comments. We want this chat show to be as interactive as possible. So let's do this. You, That's great. Let's. Uh, Let's just remove the banner and just have the three of us up there for a second. We'll be crossing to bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe. Jerry, if you can bring that banner up, that would be great just so people have it in advance for at the top of the hour for our Inject Creativity Deeper Dive event where our special guests will be presenting. The aim of this chat show is to connect you with our guests and get to know them a little bit better before they present at our Deeper Dive event. So let's introduce our first guest, and that would be, who's that, Erin? That is Joel Ahrens. Hello. So Joel is the STEM and Media Arts Specialist at Camberwell South Primary School in Melbourne. So welcome, Joel. Tell us about what you will be presenting at our Deeper Dive show. Hello, everyone. Great to be here. Um, I am going to be presenting InDesign, which is one of the maybe less of the sexier apps uh, in the creative cloud. And my aim is to show you how cool InDesign can really be. And I'm going to be presenting a lesson on what I do with my year sixes, looking at graphic design and creating magazine spreads within InDesign. Great. Thank you very, very much. And uh, our second guest tonight is MJ Ratz. He's head of e-learning at Forest Lake State High School in Brisbane. So welcome, MJ. Tell us about what you'll be presenting at the Deeper Dive show. G'day, all. Um, in the Deeper Dive, I'm having a look at also a very useful tool, probably my most favourite tool to use, and that is uh, Acrobat, Acrobat DC. So uh, it's just a, one of those tools that allows you to fix a lot of things and, and give a lot of information to a lot of people really quickly. So, It's great to have all of you guys with us. So thank you, Joel and MJ, for joining us. During the chat show, we get to find out a bit more about you guys as educators. And uh, we're looking forward to getting some comments, some questions, some thoughts from the people who are watching us live at the moment through social media. And we can see all the comments and it's just great to see so many people, so many regulars who come and join us each time. There's a, a few hellos there already. Hello, Henrietta. Hello, John. Thanks, Jerry, for bringing those up. Hello, Carl. Hello, Gary. It's great to have you guys involved with us. Uh, a first question that's uh, going to come from me, Joel, Joel, I'm going to ask you this question. Why is being an educator so important to you? Um, I think for me that the joy of being an educator is seeing uh, the kids' potential and knowing that you've had something um, to do with that. Um, it's nothing to do with uh, power or authority or anything like that. It's also got nothing to do with 
uh, an ego at all. It is really about me sort of prodding the kids a certain way and then sort of harnessing their youthful creative minds and seeing what they come up with um, to encourage that, especially in the discipline of media arts, which is all about being creative, um, is just the biggest joy for me. That's great. And what about you, MJ? Tell us about why is being an educator so important to you? To me, I think uh, as a kid, um, I really wanted to learn lots. Um, never, ever lost that. So the whole idea of lifelong learning to me was always amazing. Um, it doesn't matter who I talk to or um, or how I teach. I always want to know more about the kids, more about the teacher, more about the actual products that we use. So it's like one of those really, uh, I mean, I was always a kid that broke everything. Um, my mum always says that I'm a good boy um, and dad always has a different opinion when I was a boy. Um, but um, fixing things, breaking things and getting them working again has always been an absolute passion of mine. So allowing kids to break things or giving them permission to break things and then fix them makes us better learners. So I just love that whole process of uh, using the Adobe tools to well, mostly fix things actually, um, but just make them look better. Um, if, you know, like in Adobe, when you create a form and you press tab and it goes to the wrong space, what do you do? You know, you, you know, especially if somebody else has created that. So I like to teach my kids how to do those sort of things and just make the user experience really awesome because the more that we can make people's lives better, the better it is for everyone. Yeah, that's so true. And of course, Joel is coming to us from Victoria and MJ is coming to us from Queensland. And Jerry, I don't know if you've noticed, but so we've got Tim Cosgrove coming to us. He's, he's watching us now all the way from Toronto in Canada, which he's been a, a regular participant this year in our event. So it's, it's great to have him involved in the chat show. So welcome, Tim, from Canada. And of course, anyone else who's with us do uh, say hello via the chats and maybe pose a question to Joel as a primary teacher and MJ as a secondary teacher in their respective states. Joel, a question for you. How important is creativity in what you do? Uh, to me, creativity is everything. Um, I, As much as we try to, I, I don't feel that creativity is really um harnessed and appreciated as much in the general classroom. There's so much testing and critical thinking and um, and uh, reading and maths and everything like that. And I don't know if teachers spend time thinking about, well, how can I do this in a way that promotes creativity as well? I mean, creativity is a very hard thing to assess and maybe that's why um, teachers uh, might sort of leave it to the specialists as I am a specialist teacher um, to deal with. So um, I, I would say, you know, my subjects, STEM and media arts, are, are, you know, one of the most popular subjects in the school. And I think uh, a lot of that's got to do with the fact that the kids are encouraged to be creative, that there is no real right or wrong answer a lot of the time. It's about um, what they're trying to do and how what they're trying to express and giving them permission to fail. Um, and I think the kids really appreciate that and they appreciate that opportunity. And, you know, I try to give them to them as much as possible. Thanks, Joe. And um, I noticed before, MJ, you kind of alluded through to creativity through deconstruction. Did you want to elaborate a little bit on how important creativity is and what you do? Yeah, I'm going to use the word ways, okay, as in W-A-Y-S. There's many ways to do many things. So, uh, you know, um, I suppose it comes from my deconstructing background of pulling things apart really is the same as, um, you know, uh, I mean, I love Photoshop. So if you look at, you know, the creation and the different tools in Photoshop to get the same result. And I think the investigation um, really allows students and especially those who don't normally fit into a normal classroom environment as such, you know, that, that might be a little bit cheeky um, or just like to break things, using the different tools different ways. So um, a lot of my um, creativity these days is around the students, you know, choosing their tools. Um, they know how to find things, um, give them the tools how to find things, but then allow them to do something different, um, even using, you know, um, products within the Adobe area to make sure that, you know, they can export into 15 different 
formats as well, you know, so that the, the outcome that I want to see might not be what I get, but it'll always surprise me and make me happier because I learn things in that process too. So sort of like mutual learning, which is what I love. And uh, we have a Facebook user who is anonymous at the moment mm -hmm. saying, hi, everyone. I totally agree with our subject area. They get to have freedom to create and make mistakes that they can see how to fix. I like that idea of fixing things too and breaking things. Be cool to encourage breaking. That's great. Thank you, Facebook user. Maybe you could put in another comment with your name uh, so we know who you are would be, would be terrific. And the whole idea of of making mistakes and failing, I guess, is an interesting concept in education because we are so so tuned into not failing. Our whole system seems to be based on getting really high grades so you can get good results and go into a, a good course in the future. And that seems to stem right down into our primary school teaching. So Joel, just um, a question for you about failure. Have you have you noticed in the time that you've been a teacher that that has that has changed as a concept? It's now encouraged more these days, or is it still a big issue? Yeah, I don't know if it's encouraged, but I do see posters around the classroom that you know might have a thing like you know what, what do they say? Fail is first attempt at learning, or something like that. You know, little things like that, or little sayings that sort of give the kids um, a little bit of confidence that failing is not the um, is is not the hot, the terrible thing they might think it is. Um, certainly in my class, and and probably more in STEM actually, uh, which uh, does have sort of right or wrong, especially when you're doing coding and things like that. There are right and wrong ways to do things. Um, you only learn through the failure. And I tell the kids, I'm failing all the time. I'm always getting things wrong. And the only way that I know of getting things right is by learning my, by my mistakes. And I am often, um, as well as giving an example of the correct way to do things, I am giving what's called a non-example of the absolute incorrect way of doing things and why it's incorrect and how it stuffs it up. And just give, and I like to um, give them a little bit of history about how, you know, I've tried this several times and sometimes it hasn't worked and this is why it hasn't worked. And, and I think the kids really respond to the fact that the teacher is admitting that they're not perfect and that they get things wrong and that gives them permission to fail. So I think um, certainly in, in, in my subject area, it's something that's encouraged. Don't know if it's encouraged necessarily in the other classrooms, but it is, um, it is I don't know how you would put it, it is, uh, it is, uh, helped. I don't know. Yeah. Would you uh, maybe say that um, by modelling the ability to fail gracefully, mm. that you're actually helping the your students learn some resilience that they can apply yeah. later in life? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, th there are kids who are there are some kids who are absolutely scared to death of doing the wrong thing, and that can really uh, put. And we're talking about little guys here. Um, that can really. Um, uh, mess with their confidence and their self-esteem um yeah but just seeing a teacher who's uh, fully prepared to admit that, that they get it wrong and they always do get it wrong and that and you know i have a lot of kids sometimes who say to me oh how can you do that so quickly or how can you do that so well and i say it takes a lot of practice trust me the first time i did this i was not doing it this well um and so the kids need to hear that Great comment there. I asked my students, what did they learn from that when they make a mistake? And that's terrific. And so that's, um, I think that's from our uh, New South Wales teacher at um, Oxley College. So not, not wanting to be anonymous, just the way it was set up in Facebook. NJ, what's your response to failure and the importance of, in a sense, encouraging failure at a secondary school level? Yeah, I, I have to back up exactly what um, Joel has said there. My my, I suppose, history with um, students is um, one of the really important things is to know that failure is not a bad thing. Um, I have used now for at least four years uh, the Lynn Sharrett process of putting faces on the data. Now, if you haven't read that book, um, Putting Faces on the Data by Lynn Sharrett, please go and have a read. Um, it is all about allowing all the students to see all results all the time. So uh, after every piece of assessment, every student in the class knows where every student is. Now, the beautiful part about that is it's sort of like in your face and uh, it's like one of those concepts that 
that isn't great. But if, uh, let's just say, Johnny doesn't know exactly how to fix something in a debut, but he can see that Mary is amazing at that, then he can just go straight to her. He doesn't have to go to the teacher. He doesn't have to. So we all become teachers and students within the classroom. Um, currently, I'm having a very, very large learning curve with Minecraft online versus the mm -hmm. Minecraft of the old version, right? So, um, uh, you know, all I've said is, can you please come into class and kill and maim today? And I mean, in Minecraft, you have to make sure that's clear. But those those same processes, uh, when we did the Photoshop stuff, I said, I want you to remove a student, uh, you know, pre bring a photo of your family, and I want you to remove your least favourite family member or the one that you love the most because they got transported and you've got to go and find them in space. So those failures or those different ways of processing is really, really important. Failure is your learning. Um, you can't just do everything perfect all the time or you'll never know how to fix problems. So true. There's a lovely comment here from Henrietta, who works for AIS New South Wales. She says, I think it's such a shame that other teachers leave creativity to the specialists. All subjects can be taught creatively, even maths, which is her specialty. And she's a wonderful maths teacher. I've known Henrietta for a number of years. In fact, Henrietta was one of the original Adobe education leaders in Australia. So it's great to have you in our audience, Henrietta. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you in our Deeper Dive show where, um, you know, we, we get to see more of our audience, which is wonderful. And uh, another comment here uh, from a Facebook user, the fear of failure stops creativity. Interesting concept. Joel, you're nodding furiously. Any comments about that? Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I, I think once we, once we give kids permission to fail, um, that's where their creativity and their imagination really blossoms. And that's when they start thinking outside the box, um, both uh, doing media subjects or STEM subjects, either way, um, giving kids permission to fail and giving them that room to experiment and try things, um, essential, especially at a young age, especially. Mm, absolutely. It's really interesting too, because it is absolutely, as you said, you start them young, but it's a life skill to... Yeah. Um, understand and acknowledge that sometimes, you know, things that you feel like an adrenaline spike before public speaking or you make a mistake, your your heart starts to pump, your face gets flushed, that doesn't necessarily have to stop you in your tracks. And although obviously learning to cope with adrenaline spikes isn't in any of our curriculum goals, but right. it's certainly something that's incredibly valuable for for learners of all ages to to know how to cope with and utilise so that they can you know, do what they need to do. MJ, Tim, Timothy Cosgrove from Canada has actually asked if you could list the name of the book again and if we can put it into the chat. So what was the name of that book? So I've just done a little copy and paste. I, I can't actually get to the live comments. Um, I, you, I maybe... If you say it out loud, I'll quickly jump it into the chat. I've got I'll, I'll put it in the private I'll, chat area. I've, so, got it, uh, I've got it as a scrolling banner. Oh, yay. Yeah. yeah so, right. look, okay. and it's Michael. It's by Michael Fullen as well. I think it's Lynn Sharrett and Michael Fullen who's written it. Um, and it's putting faces on the data. And basically what it says is that every student should know what every other student's doing so that they can help support, learn, you know, see where people's weaknesses are. Now, I actually call it tribal learning. I know um, that's one of those, those uh, if, you, if you look at the history of humanity, um, you know, we function best and our brains function best when we all helped and supported each other. Um, you know, it's a really foreign process for us to have our brains functioning um, as individuals. Um, that's why we're sort of really struggling and kids are struggling with the social media stuff because they can all get picked on so quick and, and, and those types of things. Whereas being able to all support each other and help each other and figure out problems. That that's really where the, the the learning becomes more passionate for the kids, and they get to accept each other and like each other more that way too. See value in each other, actually. Now, Erin, uh, what? There's an Adobe question for these guys here. I'll there you... is actually. We were wondering if both of you could. Uh, share with us what your two favorite Adobe tools are. They may not necessarily be what you're covering in the deeper dive, but if you'd love to share, we'd love to know. Um, so uh, we'll start with you, Joel. Yeah, for me, um, 
just because video editing is something I just love doing both um, in my work and also just uh, in my amateur uh, personal life, uh, Premiere Pro is fantastic. I love Premiere. Uh, I love Rush as well as an app that's uh, easy to teach with uh, kids. But um, I just, I, I, whenever there's a new update, I just love getting into the nitty gritty of what's new with Premiere Pro or what new things I can try out. I, I love it. And then my second one would be Photoshop. I mean, Photoshop is such an amazing tool. I, I don't know anyone uh, really who has mastered the complete package that is Photoshop. There is so much uh, to that program. Um, and there is uh, just, it, it, can, um, it can just create uh, effects in such a way that's just, it, it boggles my mind. Um, so I am, I'm more familiar with, uh, I'm more experienced, I should say, with Premiere than I am with Photoshop. Um, I do like to use Photoshop, but I would say probably about a 20, 30% um, confidence with Photoshop, whereas I'm a pretty, you know, 70, 80% with uh, Premiere Pro. So those two. Now, Very Joel, nice. just to uh, cut in there, because Premiere Pro is also one of my favourites and probably is my favourite, actually, if I was to be really honest with you. Um, a new feature came out last week in Premiere Pro, which... Um, a lot of teachers were very excited about because it includes getting music into your project from Adobe Stock. And there's a now if you go to the audio tab in Premiere Pro, it lists a whole lot of genres of music. You just click on the music, bang, it comes in. Problem is that, and Jerry, you'll be able to help, help us here with this uh, problem, which we haven't got a solution for yet. That music isn't, uh, isn't free. It's not... Uh, it's not uh, royalty free and you do have to license it. However, when you do bring it into your project, it plays at an MP3 version. So you get a, a low res version, which sounds fine. So there's going to be this confusion with teachers. Going to be, oh, great, it plays. It must be free, but it's not, unfortunately. And even if you do go in and license it, because most teachers are going in with their enterprise accounts, that means they can't actually... Uh, license the credits for the music. So we've got a few barriers there. It was designed for professional video editors, but I'm already getting teachers saying, hey, this music's amazing. Um, tell us, is it free? Is ah, oh, no, and I just checked it with the video guys today. Jerry, any ideas of what we can do about Adobe Stock and teachers who are on with an enterprise account at all? Well, it depends on sort of uh, uh, which custom. I mean, uh, yeah, there is a stock enterprise uh, solution that can be added to your agreement. Um, it sort of all comes down to what the requirements are, and, and you know that's a chat that we need to have with our account executives. But uh, certainly, if it's if you've got that stock enterprise, I mean, then you'll have full access and you'll be fully integrated with what you have. In the so, meantime, we need to sort all those things out. If you go in with your yeah. private account, which I know everyone who's an Adobe education leader and currently an Adobe campus leader has their own private account, that, that gives you access. Uh, but again, you still have to get the license for that music. But it was, I was so pleased to see that resource there, but then I was devastated to, to find out all the restrictions. MJ, yes. your favourite Adobe applications. Yeah, that's an easy one. Beatrice, can I just ask you one question? What state are you from? Uh, and while you're answering that, look, my favourite is by far and always will be Photoshop. I started using it, I think, in either version one or two back in the days when before, I, like, I mean, I can't even remember. Do you know how long it's been around, Tim? Is that that's a question that I don't know? Photoshop has been yeah, around yeah, for Photoshop. 30 years. We celebrated its 30th anniversary this year. Yeah, well, I reckon I probably came in in version six or five or something like that. And um, it was just one of those tools that I could just create and draw and just have fun on the screen. So it was just so much fun. Um, the ability to be able to create layers, form structure, um, and then be able to do things like the really cool stuff now is all the 3D stuff, you know, and, and the fact that you can start to pull in stuff to do your 3D printing and everything directly from that, it's something that most people don't know. Uh, I certainly don't know it well enough yet, um, but uh, just the general things where kids can make, you know, get rid of the pimple on their forehead. Like, I mean, how cool is that with one <laughs> click? I mean, you, you know, you know, you can get Donald Trump in there and make his eyes really bulgy, you know, like that's just fun, you know, with the warp tool. You know, there's so many little tools in there. Um, I remember 
Crackalure, I think it was, was one of the uh, things back in the day for websites that you used to be able to create. So that's my one. Uh, and then look, to be honest, functionality wise, uh, Acrobat, which I'm going to present tonight, is probably my second. Um, not for any other reason except it's it's just so functional and just creates order. Um, I'm a librarian. Um, that, that's master's degree, you know, in uh, cyber learning. So for me, it was always just order for me. Uh, that's just probably um, backs me up. Now, um, Beatrice, New South Wales, um, I can't guarantee what you've got access to there. The Queensland government, if you happen to be in Queensland, pays for the LinkedIn learning site for free. So um, double check with your local council. Um, that helps. To be honest, the best place to start is always edX because it's it, it's targeted towards what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, it also gives you a lot of little projects that you can run with kids and a lot of work that's already created for you. So if I was going to say, where do you start? Always start with edX. Always start with help um, help.adobe.com. Um, and then clearly um, extra things like LinkedIn learning, well worth the price if you had to pay for it, but we don't have to pay for it in Queensland. Um, and it gives you um, beginner, intermediate and advanced tutorials as well. So, and it also gives you the project files. So, that, I mean, there's, there's nothing nothing else that can really be done outside of those three areas for me, For if you want to know where to learn any Good. Adobe product. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yes, that's and uh, we're going to need to wrap up the chat because we're about mm -hmm. to jump in soon to uh, the Deeper Dive show. Uh, because you mentioned Photoshop, though, I do have to quickly share my screen and I'm going to just see if this will come up. There it is. Can you see that picture there? That was created with one trigger on a brand new part of Photoshop called the Photoshop Camera. It only just recently became available on iOS and on Android. So I'll just stop sharing. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the Deeper Dive show. All right. Thank you very much, Joel and, and MJ. We are looking forward to seeing you at the Deeper Dive show. So we'll say goodbye to you now. And we're, Aaron and I have just got a couple little things to go through. So we'll say goodbye to Jerry as well for the moment. And Jerry, I'm just going to go to your screen. And Aaron, what's our first announcement? Okay, so our first announcement for tonight is for the Adobe Creative Educators Program. It launches next month. So this is for any educator in any sector and any curriculum area who is interested in enhancing digital literacy and creativity in their classrooms. So if you join the waitlist now and share this link with your colleagues that's shown on the screen and as well as that, your wider education networks. And make sure you do join the Adobe Creative Educators Program so that you can make the most of the APAC Adobe Education Summit, which is happening during the September holidays between September 29 and October 1. Day one of the summit is for Adobe Education leaders only. Day two, Wednesday the 30th of September, is for all educators. And the Creative Challenge Day on October 1 is for Adobe Education leaders and members of the new Adobe Creative Educators Program. Make sure that you register your interest to be involved via the link on this slide. And if, if you haven't already, during the Deeper Dive show, we'll be playing a special new advertisement for the summit. So stay tuned for that. During the start of term three, Adobe is running a three-part webinar series for K-12 teachers across Australia. This will provide demonstrations of a wide range of Adobe tools, including Adobe Captivate, Presenter, Dimension, Adobe Sign, XD, as well as some more commonly covered applications like Spark, Rush, and Photoshop. Find out more by the link on the screen. And... Uh, Note that for New South Wales teachers, this is a NESA endorsed PL opportunity. And finally, if you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via the link that is on the screen now. This is a great way to keep regularly involved with Adobe in education. All right, we're nearly at the top of the hour. So, Jerry, if you could bring up the banner for the Blue Jeans link, because that's where we're all about to move to now. Bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe. Very special thank you to Joel and to MJ for joining us. We're going to be back with them again in Blue Jeans in about 30 seconds. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Jerry. We'll see thank you all you. very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.